Not gonna lie to you, late 70s, early 80s, great time to be a kid. Come home from school, pop on some cartoons, and watch some lucky viewer play video games by screaming onomatopoeias into his telephone. Today we're looking back at a somewhat successful but seldom remembered foray into interactive television. It's known as TV Pow, today on a very solemn episode of TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes. Time for fun and prizes with Captain Mitch and POW, the only game in town. The earliest home video games may appear laughingly crude by today's standards, but it was quite amazing for its time. The technology was barely old enough to walk, but even then, it seemed to have unlimited possibilities. This was about 1977, a time when game shows littered the daytime airwaves. It seemed only natural that these newfangled video games, with their built-in skill-based elements, could be easily turned into a show with contestants and prizes. This was the idea presented to one Marvin A. Kempner. Marvin Kempner's career in the business of television syndication spanned six decades, shaping much of the history of the medium. Kempner was approached with the idea for a half-hour show where celebrities would compete against audience members on a Magnavox Odyssey. Phil Boyer, then Vice President of Programming for ABC, was keen on the general idea. Seeing as the market was already flooded with game shows, however, he thought making it a short call-in show much like the popular dialing for dollars that could be inserted anywhere on the schedule would be a much better idea. After Magnavox soured on the deal and Atari wouldn't return any phone calls, Kempner approached Fairchild Camera and Instrument. A deal was hammered out wherein the Channel F console would be featured on this program. Not just the standard hardware, mind you, but rather a custom-made version specifically for the show, with voice-activated controls and games simplified for broadcast. Of course, when it came time to demonstrate for the suits, the custom Channel F was not even close to complete. With the regular retail version of the Channel F hooked into a couple of 21-inch TV screens and a couple of telephones not hooked up to any wires, he had the executives come up to the stage, pick up the phone, and yell POW to fire a shot. He pretended voice activation was controlling the action, but in reality, he was secretly pressing the button in time for the exclamations. Nonetheless, the demo was a huge success, and before long, stations were lining up to buy the show for their respective markets. TV POW was set to launch across the country on September 1st, 1978. However, technical difficulties, particularly with the voice activation, pushed the date back to October 1st. It began in Los Angeles station KABC-TV as part of the AM Los Angeles TV program. Soon it would extend to 79 other stations across the country, with a few foreign versions as well. It proved to be a success with the viewers, all vying for a chance to play a video game on live television, even if the prizes were relatively modest. One minor setback. Shortly after launch, Fairchild exited the video game market. However, Mattel stepped in, providing their Intellivision hardware and games, giving TV Pal a nice graphical upgrade in the process. All the way from Unicorn County, I've got Tammy Huskins on the phone. She lives over in Irwin. Tammy, you excited about playing TV Pal? You still there? Are you ready to go? You still with me, Tammy? Yeah. Okay. You got 30 seconds to play. Go. Okay, I thought I lost her there for a minute. She didn't answer me when I talked to her. But she's uh, she's very eager to play TV Pass. She's been trying to get through, just like everybody else has ever since we started playing the game. She's 10 years old in the fifth grade at Evans Elementary School, and I've got her playing for $19 in cash and a TV Pal t-shirt. And she has to score 10 hits, and so far she has seven and nine uh, seconds left to go. Eight hits for Tammy Huskins. Nine, one more's all you need, girl. You got it made. Good. Well, Tammy, you won the $19 and everything we talked about. Stay on the phone. We'll be back in about five minutes. How TV Power was presented and when it aired was left entirely up to the stations. Some had on-screen personalities, others used playful characters. Sometimes it was incorporated as part of an established children's program, as was done with Bozo Circus, airing on Chicago's Superstation WGN. Many simply let their off-screen continuity announcer handle the reins. Also differing is how the players were chosen either picking a lucky call-in viewer or reaching out to contestants whose mailed-in postcard had been chosen. The former method sometimes proved to be problematic for the phone company due to the extreme volume of calls coming through at once. 
Some stations were politely asked to switch to the latter method of calling out instead. Let's play some pow. Can you know how to play football? Yeah. All right, you've seen this game before, right? Yeah. Okay, let's try. Just say pow when you want the quarterback to throw the ball. Okay. All right, let's try. Go ahead, Vito. Ah. Good job. Oh, but you missed. Okay, try again then. Despite all the differences, the underlying program was the same. The game would be put up on the screen, and the viewer at home would yell pow whenever he wanted the character to perform whatever action was necessary to score a point. The goal was to score as many points as possible within a set time limit, with prizes awarded based on the final outcome. And yeah, there were players who yelled pow 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 in rapid fire succession, even if it was somewhat less sporting and possibly problematic from a technical standpoint. The version I remember was on Channel 11 WPIX TV during their Block of Kids programming. As a form of branding themselves, they renamed the program TV Picks. Compared to the other versions, TV Picks' presentation was rather bare bones, presided over by the day's staff announcer, typically Ralph Lowenstein. Instead of POW, the callers were instructed to yell Picks to fire their shots or whatever. Today we'll be playing Moving Target. Right now we have Steve Paul of Amityville, New York on the line, ready to see how many targets he can hit. Isn't that right, Steve? Okay, you have 30 seconds to play. Just say picks to score by hitting the moving target. Ready? Go. In addition, the prize would be double if the caller knew the day's secret word or secret character or whatever. In 2008, WPIX aired a retrospective of the station's history in time for their 60th anniversary. During the TV Picks segment, WPIX news anchor Kaidi Tang claimed that the console was not, in fact, voice activated, but rather operated by an engineer who pressed the button in time to the caller's cries of picks. I couldn't find any definitive proof that the other stations operated the games this way as well, but wildly speculating here, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Why worry about expensive, custom, voice-activated hardware that may not be entirely reliable or predictable, especially for live TV, when a simple, low-tech solution provided the same end result? Space battles. Go for it there, guys. TV Picks survived until 1982, and TV POW in general was phased out by around 1983, more or less coinciding with the North American video game crash. When the video game market rebounded a few years later, Kampner approached Nintendo and Sega in an attempt to reboot the concept. However, he was unsuccessful in doing so. And thus ended the history of TV POW. Oh boy, I think the POW game's gone forever. <laughs> so now here's the question. Would something like this work today? The answer is no. Mostly for technical reasons. While there was still some significant lag due to the, the signal transmission, necessitating some timing adjustment on the part of the player, it would be much more severe in this age of digital television, particularly with the fact that the signal takes some time to process and compress to get to the screen. Next, live broadcasts these days need to be delayed 7 seconds for fear of jokesters peppering the broadcast with obscenities. Finally, in this day of more complex gaming, with controllers often sporting no less than 8 action buttons, finding one that would work with the confines of this format would be quite a challenge. This was TV Games, I was Dave, the following was the end credits. Katie Tong, sorry, it's Katie Tong. <laughs>